Okay, I've got an interesting topic. Topic nine, female sexuality. Looks like the geese are coming in. We've got a uh, geese beacon going off. All right, when you were young, your information on female sexuality may have come from so many different sources that it was difficult to figure out what was right and what was wrong. Your parents, the media, church, school, friends, and later on your partners may have all given different messages regarding what you should and should not feel and what you should and should not do. To make matters worse, if your first sexual experiences were under the control of someone else, you may feel that sex is taboo and that your own responses are bad or wrong. This chapter will try to dispel some of the many myths around female sexuality, help you see your sexual responses as normal, help you to accept your body and its sexuality as a good thing and help you decide for yourself how you feel about your sexuality. Changing the way you feel about your sexuality is a long process and may go on for most or all of your life. Molly is a 55. Molly is 55 and has worked as an emergency room nurse for most of her adult life, taking a few years off to raise her children. She remembers that as a young girl, she was taught that if she touched herself down there for any reason other than to wash herself, it meant something was wrong with her. In church school, she learned that touching the genital area was a sin and she should not even want to do it. When she was in nursing school, she heard other students discussing masturbation and it was then she discovered that she could find pleasure in touching her own body. She has gradually learned other ways to enjoy her sexuality, such as taking a warm bubble bath in a candlelit room and looking at herself nude in front of a full length mirror. Sometimes she even does a dance in the nude, enjoying the feeling of moving her body without the weight of clothing. changing the way you think about sexuality. In learning about your sexuality, you may have learned a lot of myths that may or may not even be true. Following exercise gives you an opportunity to think about some of these myths and decide how you feel about them. If you wish, you can read our statement about the myth either before or after writing your own statement. I think that moon, pretty sure you can see the moon. Uh, I hope we can. Nothing, you could see all the cottonwoods falling. Okay, myth. It is not okay for women to feel sexual or experience sexual pleasure. New way of thinking. Women have a right to feel sexual and to experience sexual pleasure. Sexuality can be fun and can make you feel revitalized and energetic passionate and healthy. How do you feel? And how do you feel 
has lines for you to answer. The next myth, if you are too old, fat, or have a disability, you aren't sexual. The new way of thinking, everyone is sexual. Women can enjoy their sexuality all their lives if they want to. While sexual feelings change as you age, women report that they continue to feel sexual or to enjoy sex, even when they are quite elderly. Being overweight doesn't have anything to do with sexuality, and women with disabilities and chronic or acute diseases can also be sexual and enjoy sex. The book, Our Bodies, Ourselves for the New Century, by Boston Women's Health Collective, New York, Simon & Schuster, 1998, has a section on sexuality and disability that is well worth reading. How do you feel? The next myth, being sexual means having intercourse with a partner. The new way of thinking, there are many ways to enjoy being sexual without having intercourse or even being with a partner. Wearing something that makes you feel really sexy, such as a blouse that nicely outlines your breasts. Thinking about past, future, or possible sexual experiences, experiences, or cuddling, hugging, and kissing. How do you feel? The next myth. Oh, here comes another boat. I guess there it goes. Our next myth, if you think about doing something, quote, kinky, like having group sex, it means you really want to do it, and it is bad to think these thoughts. The new way of thinking, many women report that they fantasize about sexual things they would never really want to do. There is nothing wrong with it. How do you feel? The next myth, your genitals should never have any smell. New way of thinking. There are normal bodily secretions that come from both female and male sexual organs. These secretions have distinct odors that are perfectly normal. How do you feel? Next myth. If you don't feel really sexy most of the time, you are not normal. The new way of thinking, everyone feels more sexual sometimes and less sexual other times. It is easier to feel sexual when you are feeling well, are relaxed and well rested, are in a private space and perhaps with a person with whom you have a close personal relationship. Drugs, alcohol, and certain medications can also reduce sexual feelings. If you notice you feel less sexual after you begin taking a medication, ask your doctor if he's aware that it could have such side effects or look the medication up in a reference book such as a consumer drug digest. Remember, 
If you don't like the side effect of a medication, you have the right not to take that medication or to ask the doctor to change you to a different one. How do you feel? The next myth, masturbation or touching your breasts or genitals, okay, genitals, <laughs> to give yourself pleasure is not okay. Okay, I'm going to read that again. Myth, masturbation or touching your breasts or genitals to give yourself pleasure is not okay. The new way of thinking, it is your body. It is normal to touch and rub your own body to give yourself pleasure. How do you feel? Okay, I've got two more. The next myth, female genitals are ugly and should not be looked at. The new way of thinking. It's up to you to decide whether you like the way your genitals look. Many women do. In fact, many enjoy looking at their genitals in a mirror. How do you feel? The next myth. Women of certain racial, cultural, and ethnic backgrounds are more sexual than other women. The new way of thinking. There is no proof of such a thing. There is diversity among all women in their expression of sexuality. How do you feel? Reading the above myths may have reminded you of others that you haven't heard over the years, others that you have heard over the years. Are there any myths and attitudes concerning your sexuality that you would like to clarify for yourself? If so, complete the following. Again, don't be afraid to consult resources such as a book, a counselor, a healthcare professional, or a crisis worker or other women with whom you feel comfortable. Myth, issue, or attitude. And then there's a line to fill it out. And then the next is, did I learn this from a reliable source of information on this topic? And the next, how do I really feel about this? What do I want to do about it? The next, does it hurt me or anyone else to feel this way? And the next, do I need more information about this? How do I plan to get it? Oh, okay, it repeats that three times. So we write down the myth, the issue, or the attitude. Then we write the answer to, did I learn this from a reliable source of information on this topic? How do I really feel about this? What do I want to do about it? Does it hurt me or anyone else to feel this way? Do I need more information about this? How do I plan to get it? All right. Feeling sexual, being sexually abused can keep you from feeling sexual feelings. You may associate sex with abuse, which can make your own sexual feelings seem dangerous. Or you may have learned to turn off your sexual feelings. You kept yourself safe by feeling nothing at all. A coping mechanism that helped you get through very difficult times. However, now that you are an adult, you will want to enjoy sexual feelings. They can still be aroused, even if you don't ever remember having felt them. 
The following exercise will help you identify those circumstances in which you feel most sexual. Use your answers here as a guide to awakening or increasing your sexuality. Let's see. There are five of five questions and answers, of course. Number one, look through a popular magazine such as People, Vanity Fair, or outside. Do you notice any subtle sexual feelings when you look at certain pictures? Write down the kinds of pictures that arouse some sexual feelings. Number two, look through your clothes and or try on clothes in your favorite store. Which kind of clothes make you feel more sexual? How would you describe those clothes? What colors are they? How do the clothes that make you feel more sexual differ from the clothes that don't arouse any sexual feelings? And number three, look at yourself in the mirror. Experiment with different facial expressions, which are more sexual, which are less sexual. Do you feel more sexual if you wear makeup? If so, what kind? If your hair is long enough, play with it. Wrap it around your head, push it away from your face, pull some of it down over your forehead, and so on. When do you feel most sexual? Number four, in front of a full length mirror, if possible, experiment with the ways you stand and walk which ways of standing and walking make you feel most sexual? Number five, think about the things you do and the places you go. When do you feel most sexual? When do you feel the least sexual? on our last thing here, our last little area. Thank you for letting me read to you. I know it's a sensitive topic. Body stimulation. You may have been taught that the only parts of the body that are involved in feeling sexual are the breasts and the genital area. This exercise will help you discover other parts of your body that have sexual feeling too. If it feels comfortable to you, do this exercise partially clothed or unclothed. Using the tips of your fingers, rub every part of your body that you feel comfortable touching. Do it very slowly using gentle circular motions, short, light strokes, or whatever feels good to you. Vary the touch to please yourself. Which areas made you feel most sexual? Did you learn anything new about your body by doing this exercise? Place to answer there. And then um, optional activities, extra work. Number one, talk with a trusted woman friend or a group of women about sexuality. Sharing with others will help you heal, feel affirmed and validated, reassess your beliefs, learn to be assertive about your needs and feel connected with others. 
Topics that might be discussed include the first time you felt sexual, your first menstrual period, what makes you feel sexy, and your first sexual experience. Number two, notice times during the day when you feel sexual. Write about them in your journal. In our last section, things to remember every day. These are things to uh, set on a calendar or on a post-it or with regularity in your phone. I am sexy. I have the right to feel and be sexual. Being sexual feels good. I enjoy my sexuality. I am changing the way I feel about my sexuality. I decide how I feel about issues related to my sexuality. And the last one, my body looks and is great. It is fine just the way it is. This has been topic nine, female sexuality. Thank you for letting me share a little bit of new information or old information in a new way. I appreciate you.